Hello guys and welcome to Pride and Prejudice Chapter 3 Analysis Screencast. So today's screencast will not analyse language devices but instead will look at characters, events and the most important quotations according to myself. Okay, um, So today's screencast has four foci that I feel are central to this chapter. So first of all, uh, the Meriton Ball, of course, will be very important for this chapter. Then we have the contrast between Mr. Bingley and Mr. Darcy, and we'll see how they are introduced. Then we're going to see the high regard for Jane at the ball as well, and what people say about her. And of course, as always, we're going to look at how Austin creates irony in Pride and Prejudice. Now, if you haven't watched um, chapter one and chapter two, to analysis now would be a very good time to have a look at it just to see uh, what my screencasts are all about okay so first thing we're going to look at is the Meriton ball okay and why I feel this is an essential part um, of this chap well of this chapter okay um, so Mr. Bingley is described as an attractive man okay and during the ball he behaves like a gentleman as well Okay. And try to remember how eager uh, Mrs. Bennet was to find out about him. Okay, now she really has a chance to have a look at him, and of course, um, the narrator kind of goes in a great deal about Mr. Bingley to show what he's like. Okay, then of course uh, we were also introduced to um, Miss. Mr. Bingley's sisters, okay, which are very important in the novel in the due course as well, okay. Uh, so, Mr. Bingley's sisters are also introduced, and the narrative describes them um, as fine women with an air of decided fashion. Now, to me, decided fashion seems to almost foreshadow how they, how they will treat those whom they consider to be um, below them, okay, so of a lower class. So, they're kind of, they've decided what they like, who they don't like, and therefore, or, um, they're described like this but at this point in time I think they're described in a positive manner but we still have this side of fashion that a bit of a threatening sense that something perhaps they're not going to be as nice as they seem at the moment. Lydia and Kitty are the youngest of the Bennets and here we get a glimpse of what they are like. Okay? To them going to a ball is all about dancing Okay, and really that was um, something that occupied them uh, for the whole evening. Okay, so um, the narrative says, and that uh, all that they had yet learned to care for, for at a ball. So really, they didn't really care about anything else during the ball, but to make sure that they were dancing for every single dance. Okay, so that's what, why Meriton Ball is so important. Okay, so another significant part of Chapter Three is, of course, the juxtaposition of Mr. Bingley and Mr. Darcy. Now, remember that this ball is thrown in order for the society to see the newly eligible young men that have arrived into the neighborhood. Okay, and both of them do have uh, a few similarities. Okay, at this point in time, so both are very wealthy. Um, Mr. Bingley, of course, gets five thousand a year, which then would have been um, very, somebody who gets obviously has a lot of money, and Mr. Darcy um, has, of course, ten thousand a year, which, comparing to the times now, would be almost like a millionaire. Okay, so somebody who's extremely wealthy that you couldn't even spend that amount of money, even if you tried. Okay. Um, and of course they're very handsome and you can see the narrator says Mr. Darcy soon drew, drew the attention of the room by his fine tall person and handsome features and the narrator continues to go on in great detail uh, how Mr. Darcy uh, looked and appeared at that time. Um, and of course there are a few differences here as well and which uh, the, the author you know, goes a great length to show us. So differences first, uh, we can see that Mr. Bingley enjoys ladies company Okay, so all the ladies flock to them, and he really enjoys being around them, being kind of the centre of attention, dancing with them, and he's very pleased. However, Mr. Darcy only danced with, with Bingley's sisters, okay, and we can see that he declined being introduced to any other lady, which would be considered a little bit rude, okay. So he knows Mr. Bingley's sisters, and these are the ladies that he dances with, okay. Um... Of course, his character is also revealed by his own dialogue with his friend, which is, of course, Mr. Bingley. He looks at Elizabeth, and when he's asked why he's not dancing with this particular lady, he notes that she is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. Okay, So, of course, we can see that he considers himself to be, um, well, her to be uh, below him. Okay, um, And, of course, perhaps the most... Um, 
disturbing thing that he says um, is well, which shows that he's very, very proud. Um, because really he said he would not dance with any other lady who was slighted slighted by other men. And that really means that Miss, um, Miss Bennett was sitting there and she wasn't dancing for that particular dance because per perhaps nobody invited her to dance. And he perhaps thought that um, she wasn't, other men had no interest in her and therefore um, he would not dance with a girl who uh, didn't draw attention of other men, okay, so slighted by other men, okay. Um, chapter 3 also focuses on one young lady which is seen to be the favourite of the Bennett household, okay, and that lady of course is Jane, we already saw that in chapter one, and by the way that Mrs. Bennett spoke about her, but here we can we can see more, okay, so Mr. Bingley of course says that she, I'm speaking about Jane, is the most beautiful creature I ever beheld, and if you look at the exclamation mark here you can see how excited Mr. Bingley is, um, even by talking about her, so we can begin to see their attachment growing here. Okay. Of course, Mr. Darcy um, does say that to Mr. Bingley that you are dancing with the only handsome girl in the room. And if you notice the italics here, you can see that perhaps there might be a bit of a jealousy going on, or perhaps he wants to underline the fact that he is lucky to have um, such a beautiful partner at this particular ball. Uh, once again, we see Mrs. Bennett um, speaking about Jane when she came back home and told her husband about the ball and she says Jane was so admired nothing could be like it okay so once again she kind of um, shows that Jane is um, the most popular and of course her favorite and even the narrator um, noted that Mr. Bingley had danced with her twice at the ball um, and of course he didn't do that with any other girl um, and therefore she was distinguished by his sister so his sisters, his sisters took notice of her and perhaps decided that um, she would be a match for him or that they need to kind of look at her in more detail okay so, and as always, we are going to look at the irony that Austin creates here as well, okay? So, at the beginning of the novel, Mrs. Bennet has a small wish, which of course we kind of feel is reasonable, and that is to have at least one of her daughters married and settled at Netherfield, okay? Which, of course, the mother wants um, only the best for her daughters. However, um, we can see that she changes the mind even as she speaks, and now she states that she would only be happy if all the others equally married, okay? So therefore, at first we kind of thought, okay, she's being re reasonable, you know, she wants uh, to see her daughter being married in Netherfield, and then she might be very happy. But then she decides that actually, um, all the other uh, four daughters need to be equally well married um, in order for have, um, in order for her to be very grateful okay so we kind of see that this creates humor as well because nobody can be um so well i'm not really sure if this is the best word to use but right now i'm going to say greedy as in order for uh, to have all all of our daughters married um to such wealthy and of course um good-natured men okay another instance is where we see irony is when mr darcy is considered to be the most handsome uh, because he has a large fortune, which is 10,000 a year. And then, of course, when that opinion changes, when they realise that he's uh, very proud and very disagreeable. And then, of course, uh, Mr. Bingley is considered to be um, the more more hands handsome man out of the two, which, of, which of course, does create um, humour, because we kind of, you know, uh, if you're attractive, you're attractive. It doesn't change by the amount of money that you should have. But here, of course, Austin plays with that in her novel. Okay, so we've come to the plenary, and what I would like you to do is to think about other events in chapter three that you think are very significant. So, for example, I might say um, that. Um, I'm wondering and I think that this is something to look at so therefore it might be significant so why did Mr. Bennett not go to the ball okay why did he stay at home and then allow his uh, wife tell him what had happened okay did he not want to go to the ball because he didn't want to be surrounded by ladies perhaps his study is his sanctuary okay and that's where he hides when he doesn't want to be disturbed 
okay? Um, so it is really for you to think of other uh, important events that you would think um, are very significant uh, for chapter three. Okay, so why we're doing this? Um, really, I want you to have your own opinion and your own voice and your own ideas because only then you can get the best grade if you have an idea which perhaps nobody else has realized or thought about it or you know, look at different quotations for any of these points that I've stated today. And as always, don't forget to check out my blog, which is of course chigontite.wordpress.com. So I do hope that you enjoy the screencast, and if you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment. Bye bye.